Steve, I don't have a great legal mind, so here we are on the after the show show. I think the best thing I could do for the after the show show is to get out. Just like that, you're just get out. Relinquish your spot. I, 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 on I the think bank it's better head. for the it's better for the country. You need to uh, drink the coffee that I accidentally took a sip out of. Eric oh. Bowling supplied the coffee for me, and you took it. I think that's well, cute that Eric Bowling is buying you coffee, Brian. I do too. Money rocks. You're right. next, Steve. Coffee. Tea oh, wow. Or... Are you coming over to represent us? Thank uh, you so yes. much. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Sometimes is... we need some legal help. Greg, this is Michael Blacker. Hi, Michael. Hi, how David are you? Schwartz, you hey. know yep. before. Michael was the attorney for the fellow by the name of German Marquez, who we were talking about uh, today and yesterday on the program, where he's this guy who's uh, here in the United States, does not speak any English. Right. He was stopped by the cops for being drunk and driving in New Jersey. The Supreme Court there in New Jersey now says that you've got to, officers have got to translate the instruction that you're going to be breathalyzed into their native tongue or right. a language that they understand, or else what happens? Well, that, that's the question. I think the bottom line is they can, they can get literally 100 to 125 languages interpreted within 10, 15 minutes. The first, the nine languages they give the test, they have on the website. The, right, the, the uh, driving test. Driving test. The other languages, there's all sorts of uh, uh, language line. AT&T has a language uh, An service. automatic translator on the line. Right, well, not automatic, but I mean, you, you tell them, you know, I need Urdu. Ten minutes later, you got Urdu. Mm -hmm. uh, the languages... So they, you're saying there is a mechanism oh, to very, do it easily. And, and very easily. Mm -hmm. Very easily. Was, was your client here in the United States legally? Yes, he was. Okay. Yeah, he was. And he just didn't have any, uh, he hadn't had any English lessons yet? No, he hadn't. Uh, no, because he lived a, a, a life that, I was talking about this today, you, you could live a life that you don't speak English if you, you know, he worked in construction mm -hmm. and, you know, he lived in a very, very narrow, you know, existence. Now, existence. I know, and, and some people think that that's also problematic because, oh, for example, you know, the other thing is when he's driving on the road, did he have a, a legal driving driver Yes, he license? did. He so when he's driving license. on the road, how can he read the signs then? Right. No, I understand that. We were discussing that earlier. Most of the signs are uh, universal. I mean, they're sure. international. Uh, Do you agree with that? Yeah, well, yeah. Well, one, one thing we're not focusing in on is there's a time factor involved with DWI cases. The, as the clock goes by, the blood alcohol goes down, or it could actually be going up, depending on how you look at it. But, but, the, but the bottom line is here, you know, so you can't... It's an undue burden on, the, on a police department to have to translate into 150 different languages. Mm -hmm. We don't translate the law into 150 different languages. Um, yet. yet. Well, yet, but, but uh, right now we don't have to do that. And the police departments are overburdened already, so now to have to translate into all these languages is just, uh, it's just ridiculous. And it's going to cause a lot of problems. It may cause some drunken drivers, uh, their convictions to be, uh, or, or they may not get convicted because it may take too long. Right. Did, did your to client ultimately get convicted for drunk driving? He got driving? convicted of drunk driving and, uh, and refusal, and the refusal we won. Mm -hmm. Right, and, and so then in response to the Supreme Court case, the uh, state of New Jersey, the Highway Patrol and other authorities as well, road authorities, have translated into 10 different languages some of the, okay, you, we're, we right. think you're drunk, you're going to have to be breathalyzed. Uh, but as I understand, David, they would have to do that down at the police station where they have access to... It's not like they're going to put the guy in the police car. No, but we don't do it in the police car anyway. Right. You're going to take him down. But uh, to David's point, then, you know, if it takes 10 minutes, 20 minutes, a half hour, two hours to get him to the cop shop to breathalyze well, him, he could sober up a little bit. The answer is, yeah, right. That's true. But if, you take, if they take too long to get there, unrelated to what language he speaks, they'll still have the same problem. I mean, you, 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 look, you have about minute. 45 are you, are you minutes to an hour. They, if you speak English, they don't give you breathalyzer no, they, on site? No, they, not in New Jersey. Okay. The only breathalyzers we give no. are at the station. And same in New York, too, down, down at the station. Right, the station. So if for some reason they're... They can't get there, but that never happens. I mean, there's, New Jersey right. has a lot of tests. But there are field, <laughs> they do do field sobriety tests. No, they do. And right. they couldn't do them in this case. Because they couldn't, he couldn't understand the instructions. Oh, but, but, but just to clarify, the field sobriety test, is, that's not what's legally admissible in court. Right. It's the actual breathalyzer right, right, that's right. done and at that's the And that's why people sometimes station. refuse to take those. Let me ask you this. Uh, do, are they now also required to read Miranda rights in ten different languages? No. 
No, but, no, but, will that, not. but will that be the next court case? Well, that, that, we I mean, that. That, that's why I think there's a Pandora's box argument uh, to be made here that now it's going to go down the line, down the line, down the line. But in, okay, in New Jersey, we do require the Miranda rights to be given in a language they understand, and they've been translated in the, quote, commonly used languages. Mm -hmm. But if you think about it, what good is it to give the Miranda rights to a guy in English if he only speaks Spanish? Because you then have to interrogate him in Spanish. I mean, it's, uh, Miranda right. really is a different problem. Yeah, but I think that we're discussing a bigger issue, though, about whether or not America should start being forced to have all these other languages. That's a separate issue from whether or not we can actually interrogate the guy. And, and that's why I think it's an issue for the court. It's an issue for the trier of fact. If there's a jury and there's a refusal issue, certainly a defense is going to be whether or not that defendant actually refused right. in the first place. Mm -hmm. And that should be an issue for the jury. And sure. now, because of this decision, they've taken that out of the context of the jury. And now they're telling the police department, you have to do it this way. Well, the finder of fact. Well, it was, it was the municipal judge. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, Michael, you did win before the New Jersey uh, Supreme Court. However, uh, because the attorney general of the uh, great state of New Jersey disagrees with you, I'm sure it's going to wind up going to a court of appeals. No, I don't think so. He, he, in in fact, in part, of his statement, in part of his statement, they sort of indicated they're not going to appeal because the decision was based on New Jersey statutory construction. Not, they, in fact, the court specifically... But wasn't it the New Jersey Supreme Court? Yes. Three they, to two, so then wouldn't that be the final word? That is the final word. Yeah. Unless is, it goes state, to the federal no, level. Because the, the, no federal court is going to take it because there's no federal right or uh, federal constitutional right involved. In fact, you get the feeling that if they did rule on constitutional grounds in the New Jersey Supreme Court, the AG would have... Uh, taking it up. That's interesting. Of but course, the legislature could. could always change that. Yeah, they're not, I don't think they're going to be in a mood in New Jersey. Yeah, what is, what's the rule in New York currently for breathalyzer instructions for uh, police? The, 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 rule, the rule for breathalyzer instructions is it's done in English. It's not, but, but, gen, but the general, there's no rule itself, but, but in New York, they are more liberal, and, and in New York, Shocking. they... Well, then the, well, well, the, well, the construction of the law is more liberal, <laughs> and they usually do translate that. Yeah. I mean, it does. It is. There is a translation. What service. I'm saying, my argument has is, a translation yeah, service. it's a translation, but it's it's common sense. But but there's no directive that has to be no, translated. Right. There is no directive. The police departments mm -hmm. do translate, especially in a language like Spanish. There's so many Spanish-speaking uh, people. So, but but the bottom line is now the Supreme Court is as taking it away. It should be an issue for the trier of fact. If the person doesn't understand, let the courts decide that. Sure. Well, they, they would have, uh, without getting too legalese, clearly the, they have the burden of, maybe not proof, but they certainly have the burden of coming forward, mm -hmm. which David understands. I mean, in other words, this issue can only be raised by the defendant, right. because how el who else would know what his English language abilities are? Mm -hmm. Final question. Did the defendant... Uh, think of the lawsuit and going to court on his own, or did you come forward or something? No, no, no. He came into my office with a uh, two tickets, and uh, I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. So I mean, when you, you say lawsuit, it's really not a lawsuit. Right. It's a it's a it's a criminal quasi criminal charge. Okay. Uh, so yeah, no, no. He came in. He wanted to be defended. So do you speak Spanish? No. So you had a translator sitting there? I did. His girlfriend spoke English. How handy. How had handy. she only been with him that day when he was arrested, she could have translated for him. Uh, no, no, that would be an interesting legal question. Guess what? It worked out that to his advantage. That would have been an interesting Boy, it legal question. It worked out to Marquez's advantage <laughs> because if he took the breathalyzer, the, yeah. all the evidence shows he probably would have failed that breathalyzer exam. So this right. situation actually worked out to his advantage. And then he would have said he didn't really understand his girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> and oh, and then does? that gets really who deep does? about what goes <laughs> on at home. Like, that's unique. <laughs> Right. Right. Very interesting debate. We thank, I thank you both for Thank sticking you. around. David, thank you, Steve. Good job. See you tomorrow.